Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and you guessed it, it's Marguerite Miller time again, and we're on 46 if I'm not mistaken. We are on 46, and yes I already knew that because I checked before I started filming for once. Let's get that out of the way. Right, let's have a little look at the prompts. There you go. Um, this one was a little tricky until I remembered that I had Edith Holden books here and then all of a sudden it all sorted itself out. So let's move that over there. I believe that's all in shot. Um, it's a dark and miserable day here yet again. We've definitely gone from fall straight into winter. So regular part raising crime here. Um, scissors, glue stick, smoother or scraper, glue book and my tear ruler. Um, I don't think this is going to be a very long one because I'm using quite large pieces of collage work today, as you'll see when I go through the prompts that are brought forward. So, um, went into a bit of a panic when it said the first from an animal with long ears. I went, I don't have any animals. Where am I going to find animals? And then I was looking through my stash and obviously I found my Edith Holden stash. And Edith Holden has rabbits with long ears and that squirrel's definitely got long ears. So I'm not sure what's going where, but this is pretty much going to be my basis of my back pages. That will have to come off, obviously, which makes me think it's more likely to be sort of that arrangement. And then I might bring that in to put it down here to... You know where I'm going with that. You've seen me do this 100 times before. Well, you've seen me do it 45 times before. Next on the list was something that starts with M. Now, um, I found a mango. Um, not sure whether that's going to work. But then I found these two, and these are maple leaves. So I thought I might cut one or two of the maple leaves out and use them on the page as well. So that's tick that box. Um, something that came in the mail. Okay. This came in the mail. This is actually a picture of a cross stitch pattern. Um, and I used to do a lot of cross stitch. I haven't done it for a while. It's one of the things that I like to do when I travel because you can throw a bit of cross stitch in. But this was from a cross stitch magazine. And I, when I got rid of the catalog, I cut out all of the little images and I've got a lot of Christmas ones. So when it comes to Christmas week, you'll probably see a lot more cross stitch. So that came in the mail. So that's what my coming in the mail was. Next is a leaf or leaves. Well, Edith Holden came to the rescue again. What's on the back? Oh, well, that's a moorhen. A moorhen starts with an M. There you go. Oh, I completely didn't realise I'd done that. So, okay, so we've got three M's and we've certainly got enough leaves. Um, what was the next one? Bubbles. Okay, totally confused me. Why would you put bubbles in with all of that grouping? So I delved into one of my stamp kits and there's bubbles here. So I'm going to stamp bubbles and I'm going to do it in a coffee colour so it's quite pale in the background but we know it's on there. And the last one is a watch or a clock. Well I've got a watch and I've got a clock and I quite like the orange and I quite like the green so they may both go on there. So, um, so I'm just going to get on with it really. Uh, let's see I think I need to make decisions. I really like the squirrel. And the squirrel really appeals to me. And I think I'm only going to lose that much of it if I take a little bit off there. It's going to work for me. So let's move the other page out of the way. I do love my Edith Holden. And I use it a lot. Um, but sometimes I can be accused of hoarding it as well. So, um, And as I have no plans for this planner to be anywhere else but in my home. Um, oh, that's exactly the right height. How freaky is that? Um, it was meant to be. Right, let's see if I can find exactly where I need to tear this. Um, as I have no plans to get rid of this planner once it's done, um, I think it's quite safe to say that I'll still be hanging on to the Edith Holden pages. So let's take that off there to about there. Let's see if I get this in a straight line. That's as straight as it's going to get for me, right? That page is going to go on. Um, come here. I'll keep this bit just in case, you know, no, even if I just cut those squares out and stamp things into those, I'll hang on to that. So let's, um, how am I going to glue a page this big? Let's do it on the, on the kitchen towel, the kitchen paper again. We know this isn't 100% successful because obviously the glue stick then grabs at the kitchen paper and it peels up. 
or pulls up but if I do the middle first then I should be fine um, what's going on uh, they have announced what have they announced they have announced that the military are going to step in to help us with the shortage of drivers of truck drivers in this country um, I am filming ahead, so it's not November. It's it's still only October, but that's what the government is doing, is they're putting those in. I have managed to put fuel into my car, so I'm hoping that means I'll have enough to, for work and getting back to the TV studios in October 20th, is it? I think it's October 20th. I said I was up at the TV filming again, so hopefully that'll give me enough or I'm going to start not being able to work um, because if I haven't got fuel it's okay if you can walk to work but I can't walk to work and I can't actually use public transport because um, I have to go all the way to South Shields which is a heck of a long drive um, and also I have to take with me almost a car load of demonstration pieces display pieces equipment it's not something you can actually carry on a train it's you, you just can't I, I can't do that. I'm, I don't have enough arms to do that. I'm going to take the word September off here. I don't mind leaving that a little bit there because you actually don't even know that it's it's a word if I don't point it out to anyone. Let's do that a bit across the top of there. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've managed to put fuel in the car. So that's that's alleviated a little bit of stress from my life because I was like, how am I going to get back to work or how am I going to do work if I can't actually get to work? So, but no mind that bit's alleviated. Um, what else? I've been to the accountants, so I've signed off all my accounts. That's always a relief each year to get that out of the way. Um, I dread doing my taxes because, as I think I've said before, I'm not a numbers person. I don't get numbers. I don't I don't really work well with numbers. Um, as I said, I think I might be ever so slightly numbers dyslexic, if I would truth be told. But I don't think when I was a schoolboy in the 60s and 70s that they actually even recognised it as much as they do now. I mean, they, they knew it was around, but did the teachers recognise it in a child? Um, and I don't know that I am dyslexic. I mean, I, I'm not I don't, I'm not dyslexic, but I don't know whether I'm a little bit maybe numbers dyslexic because I do really struggle with numbers. Um, and that's the only reason I can think of to come up with. Right, I did say I'd quite like to pop that down if I could cover that somewhere to get that colour across. I wonder, right, it's starting to be creative already people. So let's take the edge off that. I wonder if I can just, a bit of serotipish, serotip, I can't say that, serotipish, I can't say that word, serot, never mind. Sneakily do a bit of tearing is kind of where I was going. Sarah, typically, since, wow, I can't speak today. Mind you, I can't even get my brain around the word I'm trying to, trying to say now anyway. It's, you know, when you focus on something, it just doesn't work for you. Now, do I want to, yes, I think I do want a vintage photo of these just slightly because it's very much an autumn feel, this spread. Although, is autumn still going on in November or... Is it now officially winter? So there you go. We'll, we'll thought, think about that one as we go along. Surreptitiously. Surreptitiously. That's what the word was I was looking for. I knew it would come back to me eventually. Surreptitiously tear this piece of paper. How sad is that that I've lost control of the English language? My dear, it's not, a, not an unique occurrence, I can assure you. But I quite like that because that has pulled that down there quite nicely. Um, these bits, again, I'm going to keep. I mean, I've ripped September in half, but you know what? There's a nice bit there I can stamp on as well as that. What's this? View across the meadow, across the Meavy Valley. There, Meavy Valley, that starts with an M as well. 
right, um, scraps by there. So that's the basis. What are we going to put in there? Now, another one of the prompts was somebody started with an M. I wonder whether our little moorhen friend would fit in there if I got sneaky with the tear ruler. Let's see if I... Trying to work out exactly. I think I can probably just do that. Let's keep that strip. I might just be able to get away with that as a tear. Um, so I, um, I'm trying to think what else to say actually. So yeah, I'll need to take some off the back of this. So yeah, so I've fueled up the car, I've done the taxes. Um, I've had my flu shot for the year as well because I do get my yearly flu shot. That's that's been done as well. People here are now beginning to get their booster shot for the vaccine uh, for the virus. So I would imagine at some point I'm going to hear from the medical profession that I actually need to go and get my booster shot done. I was hoping to cover that. That's my bad, not it's. Right, I have to be careful here. I think we're going to have to sacrifice the wording. But that doesn't mean I won't put it on there somewhere, so let's just leave that there. Because I'm very conscious I don't want to cover up the bunnies. Because the bunnies are one of those long-eared creatures I'm supposed to have on here. Oh, that's got leaves on that might use that instead of tearing into another page. So that fits there quite nicely. I might play around with this, because this might be something I just pop in by there. Right, a little bit more vintage photo on there. Um, yes, so I'm waiting for that call. Um, I am noting that travel is opening up again. Um, how easy that's going to be moving forward, I really don't know. I mean, I don't know what the new restrictions are going to be. Um, it's a bit of a minefield, really, because if you were to buy an aeroplane ticket, will it actually say your requirements are this, 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 and this, you need to have this test, you need to produce this at the airport, or will it just be that you've actually bought the ticket and then you have to go and do a bit of research to find out what you really need to have? Because I've heard of a few people who have turned up at the airport, but they're not being allowed to travel because they haven't got certain things in place, but actually they say that they never even knew that they had to have those things in place. So I'm a little bit worried. I'm like, hmm, how... How forthcoming are the companies going to be, the airlines, about telling you what you need to do up front? Or are they just expecting us to go on and try and find everything out? Which some of these airline websites are an absolute nightmare. And you try and find one thing and then you divert it somewhere else and then you divert it somewhere else. Um, and also sometimes what what you think is needed because we book our flight so far in advance changes in the interim time so by the time you actually get to fly it's actually the criteria has changed yet again so i um, don't know i'm going to be very apprehensive when i do my first flights um yes very apprehensive about that right, let's try and tear a little bit of that off and make Make that the strip down the side because it's a plain piece of something that'll go in there. I'm probably going to have to do something about that, so, but there's quite a bit more to go on here, I think. Um, I don't know. We'll see what we put on here. So, yeah, the whole travel thing is picking up again, um, which I'm kind of excited about because obviously I haven't traveled for, well, by the time I do my first travel, it's going to be over two years. And not that I absolutely have to travel in life, but it it means that what I do for a living, I may be able to get back to doing it again because travel will open up again. Right, I think I'm going to pop that across there. I'm going to just tear that little bit down a bit there. I'm not going to um, vintage photo around the edges of these little pieces because it will just accentuate the fact that um, they look... They'll look then a bit like a patchwork of things I put in, which is exactly what they are. But there's no need to draw attention to it. Right. 
Okay, that's a very cute spread before I do anything else to it, and I'm happy with that. That's a nice quick background that goes in the box. Um, right, so I don't need the mango. Mango, back into the parking lot. Don't need the maple leaves. Because there are leaves on here, so I've pretty much ticked that box anyway. So I don't need to, I can preserve that page. I don't need to destroy that page. I've also got this page here. Actually, that says November in it. That's just giving me that strip. Right, let's tear that off and stick that down there. Note to self, always turn your pages over and see what's on the other side. And that actually means I can save that page as well because I don't need to destroy that one. I didn't tear that best in the world, did I? Come on, up you come. I sometimes wish I had fingernails, but I, I keep my fingernails short because pretty much because I work in the catering world or the cake decorating world and have done for years, um, you tend to not really have long fingernails. Well, the, the guys definitely don't. Um, because of the practicality of modelling stuff, of covering cakes in rolled fondant or sugar paste or other mediums, your nails just get in the way. I mean, you keep snagging yourselves with them. Um, I also think it's quite unhygienic to have long nails when you're working in the catering industry because you never know what's being harboured under your fingernails, do you? You'd be a bit atrocious, shocked even to see what if you looked under a microscope to find out what's under your fingernails most of the time. So anyway, enough from that. Um, so we're in November. So there you go. That works really nicely down there. I like that. That covered that up beautifully. And I didn't lose any of the other bits. Right. Um, this could be happening a lot quicker than I thought, people. Right. Animals with long ears. There you go. And you've definitely got long ears. Um, Somebody start with an M, a moor hen, which I didn't realise I had. Um, something that came in the mail. Um, that's going on there in a moment. Leaf or leaves, that'll be going on there. Um, they're already on there. And bubbles and a watch and a clock. Right, by there is bugging me slightly and I've just caught sight of this leaf. And I'm wondering if I can fussy cut this leaf out, whether this may well be the element that goes in there. I'm not being absolutely accurate with my fussy cutting because I'm not. I can't explain why not. I just, probably because I'm using a huge pair of scissors to cut out a small leaf. So, and also on speed cutting as well. I have been fussy cutting a lot in the last couple of days. I've been fussy cutting um, a digital of butterflies, which is one of the kits from Tracy Fox. I want to say it's called something like Bumper Fussy Cut Butterflies Kit. And it's lovely. And there are lots and lots and lots and lots of butterflies in it, all different various sizes. And I'm beginning to work on a project for a video for you guys that's going to be using butterflies. So, so it was a perfect match, really. Right, that bit, I think, can really go in the bin now. Right, let's give this leaf a little bit of dimension on its edges so it does stand out a bit. And I cover up the raw cut edge that I've got, which is slightly white. And I think that... I'm going to do it this way instead. What am I covering up with that? Not a lot. I think I can fit that in. I think I need to put it into place and then slide it around until it's in the right place. Which I think is pretty much there. Because I can see the word leaf and leaves. Something that came in the M. I'll just guess that was male. I do need to cover that up the slide, slide that up slightly. There you go. I'm happy with that. That just covered that piece up. I'm okay with that. It's a leaf or leaves. That's covered another one anyway, although they're already on there. Um, bubbles, right. The bubbles were the thing that I was a bit nervous about adding, but I don't know how I'm going to make bubbles look like, not look like bubbles, if that makes sense. 
as you can see I've used this the stamping kit a lot I think I'm just going to use the littlest bubbles put them on a stamp block keep that out of the way I'm going to put some of the coffee dyed on here and I'm going to just put them in little places where they might make sense um, I might want to move it to the edge for a second because I want to try and get a piece in there. It just seems like a weird prompt. But I suppose I could have been more creative and something beginning with M could be a margarita. Um, I could have had the leaves floating on a pool and then the pool would have had um, bubbles in it. And I don't know. I'm just making that up as I go along, really. Right, let's grab the longer strip of bubbles out and just put a few around. I'm not convinced this is the right thing to do, but it's a prompt and it's on there and it's it's a visual texture, people. Let's see if I can get that really, really close to the edge there. Let's see if I can tuck it in there. There you go. One more little bit up there, and maybe just a bit by there. Right, okay, enough bubbles, they're on there. Um, not convinced I wanted to put them on there, as you saw, but I've ticked that box, and they are on there. So, yeah, I'm, I like using rubber stamps, as you've seen. I've used them in a few, fair few of my collage pieces, so I like using them. So, and actually people seem to forget about using them when it comes to things like mixed media or layered stuff or collage and I do reach for them quite often. Okay, so have I got everything on here? Animals with long ears, yes. Something with an M, yes. Something that came in the mail, that's the only one left to do for there. And I've got the clock and the watch which also need to be on here. I think the clock might fit quite nicely up there and I don't mind it on that jaunty sort of angle either. So it sort of ties itself in with the orangeness of the squirrel. So let's put it so it's just fractionally covering the bubbles. I'm not trying to cover the bubbles up, just trying to make sure they're there. Um, Debating if that's in the wrong... No, that is in the right place. It feels like it's the right place to be there. I'm only covering a few leaves up. Right, that's where it's going to be. The watch may not go on there, even though I like it. I can't, I can't imagine it's going to fit on after I put this piece on. So let's just put that in there. And I like the autumnal colours of this piece anyway, so that's fine. I do think that's just the wrong colour. Even though it's green, it... Ooh. No, there's too many bits of clocks on here. Let me just clear this a bit second and have a look through the iPad. And that needs a bit of taking down just a bit. That's probably not the amount of taking down I meant. So I'll wipe away some of that without destroying the surface of the magazine article. Okay, that's that's okay. Right, I think I feel a bit lazy about that because that's as if Edith Holden did the whole thing for me. Right, um, animals with ears, yes. Um, something M, we've got a moor hen. Something that came in the mail, which is that. Leaves or bubbles. Uh, leaves, yes, we've got leaf and we've got leaves, bubbles and we've got a watch or a clock. I do think this needs just a touch of something else. What would you be if you were something else? I wonder. I've got a poppy stamp somewhere. And you've seen this cluster of rubber stamps before. I'm sure there's a poppy in there somewhere. 
I'm almost certain there's a poppy in there somewhere. Right, where's that poppy gone? That's poppies. That's poppies, I've got a little butterfly on it. That's poppies. Wow, I didn't realise I had so many poppies. Right, so if I was going to stamp poppies on here, what colour would I use? I thought that coffee was actually darker than I expected it to be. I'm wondering whether... I don't want red. What a vintage photo. I don't know, bear with me a second. Right. We know sepia is too dark. Actually, that might pull that across. I've got grey as well. Burgundy, no. Green, no. I need to get the rest of the colours of this. Um, I'm, when I'm next in the States, I think... Archivals are one of the things I'm going to pick up in Hobby Lobby or Mer um, Michael's or something because I am sorely lacking in a range of archivals and I use archivals so much. I mean, I use distress inks, I use distress oxides, but not as much as I use these. I'm thinking if I did a small poppy in this and put it there, like that one, I think that'll pull that colour across. So where's my stamping block? Right, stamping block. There's nothing underneath that, so I should be okay with that. And I'm hoping I don't get too dark of an impression. Let's position that. So it's just slightly off the page. Please work or else I've ruined the entire thing. Actually, I don't mind that at all. That's quite cute. I'm okay with that. Right, I don't want to use that one again. I'm just going to press that off on my blue book. Just to clean the stamp off. I'm going to go back in the drawer. Right. I'm kind of thinking I want something to come down here. And I might just do this colour again. I'm liking this colour. I just like the way it just... It's a good match for other things on the page. Now, I only really want the flowers on this. I don't really want any other part of it. So I have to be a bit... Ah! Don't get okay. I guess I'm doing this by hand then. Right. That's okay. Loving that. Um... I think a little bit down there wouldn't go amiss. I like that nice and clean. I do feel I need to put just something over here. So let's put that one. I need to clean the back of that stamp. Right, that's nice and tall and that might just bring that across. This block is too small. That'll do. Let's put another block under here. Now, if you are someone who sticks like on here, we've got rhinestones on here um, and you try to rubber stamp onto it, it's going to be a problem. So always try and put a block of some sort or something underneath, even if it's another book, just to give you the option of um, pressing onto something firm when you press onto it. Right. Is this actually this isn't even on a sticky back, so. Pray for me, people. I'm going in. Right. I thought this was a sticky back stamp, and it's not. That's okay. I've got I've got a little bit of interest there. It moved to touch on me, but I'm not overly worried about that. I do need to mount some of these stamps. So I went through a phase where I took all of my rubber stamps off their wooden backs, and I kind of regret that now because I. I'd like to actually have them on wooden blocks again so but hey ho that's the way of the world right let me just take the edges of this down because if any page needed it at all it's it's this one 
I'm wondering whether, having an out of body thought here, there's a nice space there. I wonder whether I can put the word Edith Holden in there because I think I've got the title page in my Edith Holden papers. If not, I know I've got a second Edith Holden book that might actually have the cover in there. Bear with me a second. I gutted my Edith Holden book a while back, well it's going to be two years ago now, because I used the cover to make um, part of the birthday present for Gail Augustinelli. Um, because I needed a spare cover because I made her a rabbit or a hair cover. Um, not sure she's used it yet. I just thought I haven't seen her use it. Um, but I took all the pages out and I had a feeling I kept the original insert cover. Sorry, I'm making a complete mess all over this top. Um, it's just I, I know these are not in order. I literally just gutted the book and... I've been rifling through these ever since. And you've got to love a touch of the Edith Holders. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, so if not, I've got another Edith Holden that I've been using bits out of. And I'm sure the cover page is on that one. I just thought it might be nice to almost pay tribute to Edith Holden with this page. It wouldn't be in the inside of that. It would be on the outside. Right, so that's the back of the book. This is January, so there you go. That's what I was looking for. Right, let's clean up my mess. Sorry for those of you who are slightly envious. Um, I sort of kind of have a constant hunt on for Edith Holden. Um, whenever it pops up, like on eBay or in a shop, if I'm doing a thrift shop, a thrift or a, a charity shop, um, hunt, I will always keep an eye open for Edith Holden because I know I will always use it. The only trouble with the internet now is that the internet knows that we all like Edith Holden, so I see lots of stamping space for words. Um, so of course the price of an Edith Holden book has got skyrocketed and that's if you can find them in the first place now. So it's one of those things I really do kind of wish was out of copyright because so many people love using the pages and yet, see I think that would look lovely there, and yet we can't use them because I'm covering up two bunnies, but there is a bunny there. See if I do this I'm covering up the clock. We know the clock is there. Um, no, that was my natural instinct I think I'm going to put there because I've still got a bunny on the page. So I just think it's it's right to give credit for this one. Um, so yes, I do. I do tend to hunt them down. And there are lots of different types of Edith Holden books too. There's the original Country Diary, Edwardian Diary. There's some planners now that are out there. There's, there's different sorts of things you can find bits in, but it's it's the ones we're all hunting for that have got the original handwriting in it. Right. Oh, I do feel that that needs to be in there. Yeah, we'll preserve two of the, uh, one of the bunnies and the other two will be in their burrows. We won't see them, but we'll know they're on the page somewhere. Right, and let's pop that right across there. And give that a bit of a smooth down with my scraper. Right, I think we're done and dusted. I don't really want to add any more to that because that's a beautiful looking page all of itself um, and I don't want to muddy the waters I love the illustrations I love the fact that I've got every single prompt is on here I think we're going to say that's done and dusted guys um, so I think all it needs to say is there you go that's my Etsy store and my Facebook and my website and you're already on the YouTube channel so I'd love you to like me share me subscribe to me and positive comments are always welcome, as I've always said. And this is me. I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Until next time, take care, guys. Bye-bye.